late 1930s. Oh, during the late 1930s. Oh, that's all right. Uh, oh, hold on just a second here. During the late 1930s, uh, there was a uh, fraudulent medical practitioner who transformed the hotel into an abnormal hospital. And this guy's name was Norman Baker, you know, and, and, uh, and I was always just curious, like, you know, who was this guy and how could something like that happen? Because a lot of people died there and it was very strange period in this very strange hotel's history. And of course, it's supposed to be this very haunted place. And so many of these ghost stories, uh, they, they go back to this period when it was the when it was the Baker Hospital from 1937 to 1939, up until Norman Baker's arrest. Um, in fact, in 2019, they found they unearthed. So a landscaper was doing some work at the Crescent Hotel and these jars that that they, they dug up these jars uh, and with questionable substance. It was human tissue. And this, this, these jars were sent off to state crime labs for analysis. And it, they determined that it was, it dated back to the Baker when it was the Baker hospital. And so anyway, that was actually around the time I was finishing this book. So it was very serendipitous. I actually knew all about what was happening and that actually garnished national attention. So um so anyway, uh, like I said, I, I moved to Fayetteville in 2003 for graduate school. I got my master's in fine arts at the University of Arkansas. And uh, during this period, I started to conduct research on the Crescent. You know, I thought, well, while I'm living here, I've, I've always been intrigued by this place. And it kind of haunted me, you know, these stories about this guy since I was a kid. And so I thought, well, I'm, I'd go to the Crescent, go on their ghost tours, and then start doing research at the library and uh let's see here i'm trying to for some reason it's not advancing i don't know let's see oh there we go i'll just use the that works okay um so anyway yeah i started doing a bunch of uh research i would go to the uh stay at the hotel and then next day, I would go over to the library there in Eureka, which is a lovely little library, and it's it's wonderful. They had, and I, I was able to conduct a lot of research there. Um, eventually, I I started, uh, you know, this led to even more and more research. Many of these images I'm showing you guys, like this, for for example, this is a uh, this is from my book. This is actually this is you know me at my uh, doing research. This is these are watercolors. Um, so the bulk of this book was done in watercolor. So, um, anyway, I've also done research up in Muscatine, Iowa, and some, uh, Little Rock, Muscatine, Iowa, Nuevo Laredo, Texas, and some other places, um, at the University of Arkansas. Um, so the book's been in development for about a decade. Um, phases in this project include extensive research conducting oral history uh, re interviews. Uh, it's a lot of it's oral histories, you know, and so reference photography, which included traveling across the country to areas of significance. And then I also spent a lot of time, like I said, at the hotel, you know, in conducting interviews with people there. I did a, uh, I did a uh, residency at the Writers Colony at Derry Hollow. And so I, I was there for, about a week, and during that time, I, I interviewed so many people. It was great. This is I drew myself on the ghost tour there, you know, <laughs> taking notes and so, and uh, and I also draw a lot whenever I'm interviewing because I'm an artist and so I'm a visual storyteller. And so here, this is my cat Buzz right here. He's I guess he kind of serves as like my art director, I guess. So anyway. Um, yeah, so my 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 work is generally I explore unusual real places and events, um, and I, I love incorporating imagery that I've observed through my travels. Oftentimes, I'll I'll uh, I'll actually add elements from you know from documents that I've collected on my travels into my art, and because I love drawing on, I like building up you know, this kind of uh, collage in, 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 with my work. And, and some of that creeps into my graphic novel as well, or my graphic nonfiction, I should say. Um, and then my narratives explore perception uh, through unique locations in their past. 
Stories derived from various primary sources, such as oral histories, letters, old newspapers, and told through a variety of media, such as watercolor and, and various, various media, such as acrylic, color pencils, charcoal, ink. And all of this kind of reflects various interpretations of history. Here, this is funny. This is, so uh, the book was released in 2022, but I even found this old. Like I said, I have worked on this thing for over a decade. This is from J July 19th, 2012. And this is a page from my book. And this is me working on the book. Uh, <clears throat> and this was a Carroll County, uh, or the lovely county citizen in the newspaper in 2012. And so I was still working on, I mean, the book wouldn't be finished until, oh, 2019 is when I actually finished, but it didn't come out until 2022. So it's been a very big process. Um, so anyway, here are some of my early pencil drawings. And then, you know, and I do my notes over here. I'm just kind of going through a little bit of the process so you can kind of see um doing you know taking lots of notes and you can kind of see and then after that i'll take i'll do these tighter drawings and then i start rendering uh in in watercolor building it up and uh so anyway uh after drawing and painting the 240 pages i then worked in the text and like i said in 2019 i was ready to publish my book and so, like I said, I worked with a literary agent for about a year. He sent PDF version, versions of my book to various publishers, hoping to land a publishing deal. Publishers found the book to be intriguing, but were, like I said earlier, they're very risk adverse and are unaware of both, for the most part, many of these you know, publishers that weren't aware of Eureka Springs or the Crescent Hotel. And so they passed. They passed on, and they, it, because they thought that it was more, just had like regional interest. Whereas, like I said, it's about a charlatan and we see charlatans to this very day. I mean, we, charlatans are as old as, you know, they go back to the Greeks, you know? And so um, the themes are universal in this book. And also, you know, anyone interested in a old places like this with the interesting histories. So anyway, so what I decided to do then is I decided to print, print the book myself I started researching printers, and since the book was 240 uh, fully painted pages long, was, uh, I, I figured the book should be a nice hardcover. You know, I wanted to have a nice uh, paper quality as well. And so, after doing extensive research on on printers, um, I quickly realized it was going to be very expensive. <laughs> you know, to do this sort of thing. And I, I found a company that I was pretty intrigued by. It was called Print Ninja, and they're out of Chicago. And they do the actual printing. Uh, they Well, they actually, they're more like the liaison, but the actual printing is done in China. They, the, the, all the administrative aspects are in Chicago. And so they actually print it in China to cut costs down. And so that did help a little bit with, with, with the costs. And so in order to print a thousand books at that time, it cost me around $11,000. The second round was a little bit more expensive, but, but anyway, um, I knew that not only did I want the book to be a hardcover, but I also prefer to have the pages sewn into the book. And you can kind of see that, like if you're doing a book, I highly recommend having it sewn because this is the, it's called Smythe Sewing. And so they also have, you know, a glued book, but I've always found that, you know, books that I like that are glued, they, they tend to come apart after, you know, so many months. But you, I mean, if, if you read them a lot, I mean, if you can get six months out of them, you're lucky, but the sewn books, they'll stay together, you know, so they're much more lasting. So anyway, so then what I decided to do was, uh, look into crowdsourcing platforms. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with crowdsourcing. Um, you have companies like Kickstarter, GoFundMe, Indiegogo, Patreon, Patreon. And uh, so in researching these companies, I, I made sure to educate myself and understand like what type of crowdsourcing platform would be best for my particular project. So one way to kind of think about this basically is if it's a thing, 
it's a thing like you have a product and that that could be like all the way from like a book or a bicycle or a clothing item then if that's the case you might you might want to look into something like kickstarter that's what i would recommend uh let me see if i have a little uh laser pointer here we go hey laser pointer so there we go kickstarter so um and that's why i did that because I had this book, you know, it was something, it was a tangible object that they could get. And so if, if your, your thing you're wanting to do is something like an ongoing series, like a film series, uh, like a YouTube or a podcast, or even like a web comic, something like that, then I would probably go with something more like Patreon, you know, um, because then they the your backers will help fund this ongoing thing you know and and uh whereas with something like kickstarter it was uh uh you know you just you you set up your date you know and then you have a month or so and then you just you go for it and so i'll talk more about that um also i found that one of the reasons also that I uh, um, chose uh, Kickstarter over GoFundMe and Indiegogo is like some of these platforms like GoFundMe don't have a very strict vetting process. So anyone can put their projects on regardless of how poor the quality is. Um, whereas Kickstarter has a bit higher standards generally. So the quality of the projects, the, pro uh, the products seem to be a little higher. Um, they, they Kickstarter basically reviews all the projects before they launch just to make sure that they're suitable uh, for the Kickstarter community. They check to make sure that each project meets rules and criteria and these rules and review processes are in place to ensure that the uh, Kickstarter remains a community. It's all about supporting creative ideas. And so all in all, I, uh, I've learned that Kickstarter accepts about 80% of the projects that come their way. So I, I just really like that aspect because I, I, I do take great pride in my book. I've spent a lot of time in the, uh, the design aspect, the quality, like I said, the, the quality of the paper, the printing, everything was very, very, uh, I'm very, very meticulous about all that. And so uh, anyway, I learned that, Nearly $40 million have been raised for comics and graphic novel projects on Kickstarter, but still more than half of all comic projects on Kickstarter fail because they are not properly prepared for a successful campaign. So if you think about that, like nearly half, half of all the projects, they just fail, you know? And, you know, one of the things about when you do, when you do that, it's like, uh, it, it's it's up there for you know they they it stays up there you know and so um like you can see all the projects that have failed it's almost like this graveyard of it but it also see all the successes you know all the the successfully funded projects are still up you know and you can go through and find all these so i just think it's it's really really it's it's so important to do your research before you launch your Kickstarter campaign. And so how I did that is I checked out books on how to prepare for my first crowdfunding campaign and how to pre-launch with minimal budget. And uh, uh, not only that, I want to tell you guys also, it's like, I, 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 can't, I can't stress enough doing your research like that beforehand because people, I mean, it is a, it is it can be extremely stressful doing a Kickstarter campaign if you're not prepared. I mean, it can be even if you are prepared, but I mean, people have gone to like have been hospitalized because of Kickstarter campaigns because it became it's so stressful. Um, I've heard some people say that it was one of the hardest things they've ever done in their life is doing a Kickstarter campaign. Um, just because of the sheer amount of stress and all, you know, how much was all the little working parts. Um, but like I said, I, I kept waiting for that, but it never really happened for me because I mean, that, that high, high level of stress 
and that was just because I did all my homework. You know, I just, I, um, I, uh, like, like, like I said, I read books. I, I was telling Scarlett earlier that I read about three different books on Kickstarter. And these are a couple of the books I read. Um, uh, and these are great. These are great. They taught me how to target my audience and co collect potential backers early in advance and how to plan a Kickstarter campaign from start to finish with the aim of ensuring that you get, you know, fully funded. Um, I also learned why uh, project launch timing is important in the steps I needed to do during the launch day. So another thing that I also, another great resource was- Hey, hey Sean, before, before we move on, I just wanted to share the poll that we did. We yeah, did. oh, uh, I'm sorry. And that kind of, that will kind of tell you where people are right now in the process. So oh, okay. they don't have crowd, we've got, uh, about 64% of people responded here and oh, we have 82% uh, of those uh, have no crowdfunding experience. So anything you can think of for uh, tips or making sure that we can fit our projects in. Most of the people here are working on a project or considering it. Yeah. Um, and their um, funding for prop projects is mostly not getting it funding, uh, followed by savings and um, some traditional donations or fundraising tactics. Um, and then it's split between crowdfunding and getting grants for projects. So uh, I, thought, I thought that was really interesting, uh, the diverse revenue building strategies going on. So anyway, thank, sure. you, thank you so much for answering that. Uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, that's great. Am I supposed to do anything when this pops up? The poll, like the, do I? No, you don't have to do anything. Oh. I'll, I'll just stop sharing it. It's, it's, oh. it's good, oh. but I, I thought it was cool. <laughs> no, yeah, this is cool. No, I, I, I appreciate this. This is great. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. But um, yeah, like, I mean, it is great to have multiple, you know, like, uh, I, I, you know, like I said, like, you know, grants and, and whatnot, um, I'll kind of get into that here in just a little bit like that. I was able to, you know, I got a couple of grants throughout. One of them was the Arkansas Arts Council, you know, fellowship. And so that was so, so helpful. I can't, I can't, I cannot thank him enough. It was wonderful. And uh, as well as the Artist 360 grant and, and, uh, and it just, you know, both those, together just uh, helped out immensely and you know, that all just went into the printing and all the all the extra costs shipping and all that but I'll kind of get into that um another thing that I also did like for this since it, since it was a, a narrative there is a, a podcast I found called comics launch with an independent comic author this guy Tyler James and he kind of goes into like the Mindset strategies and tactics tactics he used on a number of successful Kickstarter projects, and much of this stuff, like even my project here, it many different uh, types of products. Whatever you know you're doing, it may not be a a graphic novel or even a book, but many of the things I'm telling you can still apply. You know, and same with these, you know, like this like this podcast here. He explains how to design a set, successful campaign from start to finish. Goal setting, campaign, marketing, avoiding the pitfalls of fulfillment, and much more. So, um, let's see here. Uh, what okay. what were some some pitfalls that you ran into, and how did you overcome them? <clears throat> well, um, well, let's see here. Like my, one of the pitfalls with with uh, oh gosh. Um, with with crowdfunding or or coming up with your budget or like making this project a reality, um, I you know I well like I, I was gonna initially like I had I so it's one of those things like okay so I I launched my project in October, and see that was something that was really very very uh, that just kind of happened because I was gonna launch my project the April before like the spring before that. 
and I wasn't ready. Like I, I, cause I, I had not done nearly enough research, you know, for this thing. And so, but actually October worked out better because my book is kind of spooky because it's about the Crescent Hotel, which is this haunted hospital. It's supposedly, although my book's nonfiction, it's still a very spooky book because of, you know, um, when it was a hospital. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, it was one of those things where my wife actually told, came, you know, came in the room where I was just like, I was sitting there trying, working on this and just about to, you know, pull my hair out. I was so like, oh, I can't. I don't think I'm ready for this. She's like, you don't have to do it right. Do your prize. You know, you don't have to do your kit, your Kickstarter launch in April, just because that's what you, you know, you can, you can wait and do it, you know, in a few, you know, in the fall, and then it might even be better. And so I was like, I don't know. It was one of those things where it was like, I just, sometimes I'll get things in my head and I feel like, like, I'm just going to, I have to do that. But since since I extended the the release date out until the fall, that gave me a lot more time to uh, do do all kinds of like I did all kinds of marketing for that for that thing. I mean, I made up these little books, I, and I, I'm going to kind of get into that in the in the in this, you know. Um, but you know, I don't honestly, you know, there weren't really a whole lot. I mean, it, it was just it was. It, it really went pretty smoothly. I mean, I didn't have a whole lot of, it was really like that. Had I, had I launched it in April, it wouldn't have done nearly as well. Like it, because I just wasn't ready. But since I waited, that's, I mean, honestly, I mean, that could have been really bad had I done that. Um, but since I waited, I think that was, I mean, I don't know if you'd call that a pitfall really. It was more just. Definitely a challenge. And that's interesting challenge yeah i mean but you know i can't I, you know but it was it was definitely challenging and that was that's one of those things like oh and i, I want to tell you also i when i was like working on my book and finishing this project that's another time when my wife like told gave me some advice and like my wife's a librarian here in Fayetteville Public Library and so she was instrumental in helping me like organize all my research because she's really good at that sort of thing you know and so but um I was when I was working on my book I, I was trying to do so much on like social media and all that kind of stuff and it was it really did start to kind of stress me out and so uh she, she she and it's really hard to juggle all that stuff and she was like she told me she's like hey you know you don't have to uh why don't you just take a hiatus and you know announce that and just step away from from all that for a little bit and and i did and so i told her when i'm going to take a short hiatus from from social media and this is back in like i don't even it was like 2000 and 10 or something like that and then I was looking at it and I didn't get back on until like 2016 or something like that so I was off for like six years but I finished I was able to finish my book you know because I just didn't have all those distractions and so um but then you know once I was able to you know once I finished the book and then it was amazing how many people will still just jump right back on so it's like you can take time away from that stuff and it and it's not like, I mean, yeah, you kind of, you can, you kind of disappear for a little bit, but when you get back on people, they don't care. They'll jump back. They'll, they'll, you know, people will jump back on again. So, and they did, and it wasn't that big of a deal. And so I was able to then start kind of, you know, uh, you know, uh, just talking about, you know, promoting the the Kickstarter campaign and my book and all that kind of stuff. So. Anyway, so like what I was talking about earlier, so like budget was a big, you know, thing. So once I figured out my printing and production costs, I also figured the general shipping cost as well. And that worked into my campaign funding goals, you know, because you really do have to consider when you're having something shipped across the, you know, like in my case, you know, it was going across the Pacific and then it would go into that big port in Los Angeles and then across the country. <laughs> and then, and so that, that gets expensive, you know, especially when it's like a thousand books, it's like a couple of tons or whatever. It was like, it was huge, you know, this, and, uh, 
and and you also got to consider the space you know and all that where how much space all that's going to take up you know so but now it's time to design my pre-launch kickstarter page using the basic template provided and if we and i was thinking you know what we could do here in a bit if you guys would like we can go to my kickstarter page and i can kind of show you how i did that you know in a little bit um because one of the things you want to do when you're when you're doing your kickstarter page is choose a great project image and so obviously i use this because that was going to be my cover and it's the first part of your project people will see and you want to make a good first impression you know um and and also you it's kind of like your brand for this project and it's kind of the main image. You always want to have a certain main image that you always kind of go back to. This sort and it'll sort of become this kind of iconic thing, you know. And so I was also lucky in the sense that, you know, the Crescent Hotel is kind of a legend throughout, you know, Arkansas, you know, and the Ozark region, you know. And uh and so that really did help. And so I had this kind of you know, this spooky kind of image of the Crescent Hotel. And so I think that also helped quite a bit. Um, and so my book also has an overall handmade feel. So I wanted my Kickstarter page to uh, reflect this. And so I designed the headers to look as if they were printed on an old printing press on worn paper taped onto actual page yeah you know and so this is how i did it on my kickstarter page i mean i can kind of if i don't know can i do you want me to well i don't know maybe i should just go through this what do you think scarlett should i guess go through but maybe go through this and then i can show everybody my kickstarter page does that sound okay that sounds fun okay so you, everybody knows it's like kickstarter is basically broken up into you know your different sections you know and so I can, I can show you all that but you have like the project and then i'll talk about the book and the rewards um I, I go specifically into like the book and then i talk about the rewards that people can get like as far as like stretch goals um so anyway when you're describing and then you also want to have a thing where you discuss shipping and how that's going to work you just want to be as transparent as you can when you're doing a kickstarter page and always, always share information with everybody throughout the whole process, because that makes it, you know, that makes people warm up to you more and they trust you. Because some people will give a lot of money, you know, for this project. And some people did. I was really amazed, you know. Um, I had some people, you know, back my project, you know, give a couple thousand dollars. It was crazy. Um, so when describing your project on your Kickstarter page, Imagine explaining your project to a friend, right? So what would you say, you know, and how, uh, what might they ask you and how would you show them you're serious, prepared and capable of doing a great job? You wanna just make sure that, you know, the person that is backing your project feels like they're in good hands, you know? And so that was, that's what, that's what I did. And so your, your project page is your chance to tell people that story, like who you are, what you wanna make, and, and be as clear and concise as possible. And so you can kind of see like right here, you know, I'm like uh, telling a little bit about, you know, my, my graphic novel, exhaustively researched documentary style, nonfiction, um, and then what it's about. And I kind of, you know, you all know that, I've told you a little bit about that. And so this is what's gonna kind of, you know, bring people in to the project. And then, um, like I said, then you have this uh, where I actually describe the actual physical object, like the actual book, you know, um, and that's where I'm telling about the physical aspects of the book. You know, it's seven by 10, 240 pages, Smithsonian. Uh, these are, you know, high quality, 80 pound paper, all that kind of stuff. Like I would get into the, those aspects. Um, and like I said, you know, I, my book was, uh, was hand painted. And so I want, you know, I do a lot of cut and paste and painting and drawing. I draw, you know, physically drawing. And, and so I wanted the whole feel of this page to feel like, you know, you're almost, 
you can see that collage aspect, the research aspect, and I want it to feel very uh, tactile, you know, I wanted to feel like this thing that, because I think as we're, as humans, you know, we're kind of tactile creatures. We like to be able to actually hold physical objects, you know, in our hand. Um, so anyway, so, you know, then you got to ask yourself, you know, why do people back, why uh, do people back projects? To start, they want it to support what you're doing, but they also want to feel like they're getting something in return. And so I, you have these rewards. And so basically it's like I had, so, okay. So when you're doing your Kickstarter campaign, you have different tiers of rewards. Like, and, and so I had like my, uh, well here, let's like, and the rewards let, you know, let them share in the work. Uh, you know better than anyone what your community wants and what you uh, and what would get you back to the a project. Um, offer your work in different formats, from like digital downloads to limited editions. Consider custom work and a chance to be a part of the process. So basically, like for tier one, I you know if you just don't uh, you know uh, donate five dollars, you get uh, or pledge five dollars, you get the digital preview, and uh, so that's a digital reward. Um, some people, you know, when they do these kind of things, they do the whole book. See, I just did the preview book because I actually did make a preview book, and I'll, I'll get into that here in a little bit. But um, and then tier number two was the digital bu bundle, and uh, and for the digital bundle. Um, I basically had uh, uh, the digital book preview as well as screensavers for the for your phone and desktop, and so yeah, I mean that was a good incentive. So you know, and then once they do that, then uh, you know, then they, uh, there's also tier three, and then and that's the actual book. So the book's actually you know forty dollars thirty nine ninety five for the book. And, but on the Kickstarter, you get not only the book, but you also get, you get all the rewards beneath that, you know, so you get the digital bundle and then you get the digital preview. So, and then, um, and then after that, there's the print bundle. And so for the print bundle, this includes the book. And then I also made three little prints that, people get. And these are really nice prints. I have a guy that does printing for me in Missouri. And so he, uh, and so yeah, if you, if you uh, pledge $75, you get the prints, you get the book, and then you get all the digital rewards. Um, so anyway, and it just keeps going up, you know, and that's, so then we have, uh, after that, there's the uh, signature bundle. And for the signature bundle, I made a book plate, and you can see that there. It's a and I signed it, so it's a signed book plate. Um, and then you get all the all the, the prints, the book, and all the digital rewards. And then uh, underneath that is the original art bundle, and that was three hundred dollars. And there you get a small uh, painting, like a small illustration. Um, related to what follows is true because what follows is true is the banner it's like i'm actually doing it's it's the the umbrella under which um these stories you know reside and so i'm actually going to be doing more stories like the like crescent hotel you know i've got other other ones i'm working on now um and so i would have images you know related to that you know and so that's what so for 300 bucks they get this, this little painting, which that's a great deal. I mean, you get an actual original piece of art. Um, then you get the book play, prints, the books, and then the digital rewards. And then after that is the original page bundle. And this is tier seven. So the backers get the book, an original page. So yeah, they get an original page from the book. And that's for $500. Um, and then you get the sign book play prints and everything else. And so it just keeps getting, you know, keeps growing, you know. 
what not to offer. Oh, what's Wait, that? I have a question before you continue. Um, yeah. How do you keep up with all this? <laughs> like, do you have a oh, spreadsheet God. or like, how are you, how are you managing? Um, yeah, I did. I actually had like an Excel spreadsheet where I was just kind of keeping, keeping track of everything because it does, it, it, it's, it, um, you, the thing is, okay, so the bulk of the, the people that are going to do your project that are going to, uh, back it are going to stay somewhere around, you know, $100 and less. So like most of them are going to get the book and they're going to do the $40 rewards. Okay. So you're not, and, and so the thing is the digital bundle and the, the, all the digital rewards that doesn't cost me anything. Right. It's, it's at well time, but it's like, that's just, you know, that's just money that you make towards the campaign and the project and so and then the book bundle like i said that's the book and so most people are just going to get that but then you got then after that the, the second after that you're going to get people that are going to get the 75 dollar like the print bundle where they get prints but it's really not as many people like they get these higher rewards like i i had some do the hundred dollar but after that it's like the original art bundle and the original page bundle there's just a handful of people that'll do that um, and then, but, and you know, what's absolutely crazy about that is, so when you do this kind of, you know, when you do your, your original art bundle, original page bundle, then you send out like, okay, so you, thank you. And this is great. You know, and then once, you know, it, it, it goes and it's like the books are on the way and all this, I, and you ask everybody, so you, you know, cause you have to let me know what pages you want. And so I made a little um, I had a uh, a link on my Kickstarter page, and I can show you all here in a bit. Um, you can click on, and it would show you what pages are available. Okay, so there were certain pages that were available, and then after someone would choose one, well, I would just take it out, and then, or I would put claimed on it, you know. And same with the all, all the prints, you know, and so. Um, and I would just, you know, keep track of it. But it wasn't really that many people to answer your questions, Carl. Like I said, it's like most people are just getting the book and then maybe the prints. How and did then, you like, come up with your price for the original pages, though? That 500 seems low to me. Low. Yeah, it's very, it's very low. And that was too low. I, like, I wouldn't do that now. I would not do that now. Like I right now, it's like, God, I would not. Because I mean, if I'm selling them, it's like a couple thousand dollars, you know, because they're these are original pages in this book. And it's like and and but I you, and the reason why is because I just didn't know. I didn't know how well this thing was going to do. I didn't know if I didn't know if it was even going to, you know, if I was going to make anything off this. I'd never done a Kickstarter campaign before. And so I was like, well, you know, I'm I'm always kind of lowballing myself. Like I always go low and I, I should take it up, you know, much more because so, so much work that goes into all this, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's all, it's all arbitrary, you know, it's like, it's all about perception, but it's true. Like these are the original pages and once they're gone, I mean, you know, it's like if, if people are interested and they have a favorite page from the book, then, you know, I, I still have these available. Like right now, I've actually got a bunch of, I've got galleries that are wanting, I, I've been showing them in galleries. In fact, 21C Museum up and, and Hotel up in Bentonville, they've got, I think on the 15th is when they're gonna, they're, they've got like five pages that they're displaying in their galleries up there in Bentonville. Um, I was just asked by Spiva Art, gallery which, which is this beautiful new gallery up in Joplin Missouri they're going to be show, they, they're asking about show, doing a show um, I've shown at the Bradbury Art Museum in Jonesboro and I've got a show coming up in Monticello University of Arkansas Monticello so um didn't you also yeah. so show down here in uh, downtown Little Rock uh yeah downtown oh yeah, yeah yeah I had a uh we had there was the show at the library at the Cal's um in their gallery there. Uh, it was uh, it was kind of a, a narrative art uh, 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 show. It was a collective of different 
of, uh, it was a group show with different narrative artists, like graphic novelists. Um, and it was artists like uh, that were Arkansas related, you know, artists, like uh, graphic novelists, like Nate Powell was in there. Uh, I've never met Nate, but he does wonderful work and he's, he's a, you know, he's a really big, you know, graphic novelist. And my, my, my wife's met him, but I, he was in there and that was Randy Duncan had, uh, he's, who's wonderful. He's a scholar of comics and he teaches literature classes down at, uh, in at Arkadelphia, I believe. Um, and anyway, he, uh, he curated this, this exhibit and it was, it was fantastic. But yeah, I've done a lot of shows. I've got work in Eureka Springs right now at the Historical Museum, and that's going to be up until the end of this month, along with Artifacts when it was the Baker Hospital. So anyway, um, oh, another thing I wanted to tell you all, like when I'm doing this, if you notice, like all my images are flat, like all my rewards are flat. And that's because I wanted, I wanted, I learned this is one of the things I learned in books because a lot of times people will have rewards like t-shirts or like shot glasses or, you know, all little trinkets. But I, I learned that if you keep it flat, that way it's like, it's going to be easier to ship because if you're doing offering like t-shirts and stuff, well, then that's going to be like, you're going to have to ship that separately in a different thing. Or if it's like a shot glass, well, that's breakable and you got to like have a, container and all you know so it's like I wanted to keep it as simple as I could so I was like with my and also I made the sizes of these prints small so they would actually fit in the book so I was able to actually stick them in the book along with the signed book plate and then and then but once it got up to the bigger rewards like the original art um I would send those separately because these people are you know they're offering you know they're pledging you know hundreds of dollars so that's great. That's no big, that's no problem, <clears throat> you know. But what I was going to say, it's crazy though. Sometimes people pledged for the high things and then they never claimed it. They never claimed anything. It's so bizarre. And I would ask him, I'd be like, um, you're, let me know what, what you would like, you know, and I would email and then never hear anything. And then I'd just keep emailing them. And then I finally, I just sent out a, I told everybody, I sent out and said, okay, so the rewards will be there. The cutoff is this day. And then, you know, and, and uh, yeah. And so that I, but you never know. You just, I, you just never know. I mean, most people did claim the rewards, but you just never know. So, and then, but some people might just want, they just want to like donate to the cause or, you know, help support the book and they just want a book. You never know. Um, oh, so any, anyway, when you're thinking about your awards, you also, um, there's certain things that you don't want to offer. Uh, there are a few things Kickstarter prohibits, inclu including like financial returns and resell reselling items from elsewhere. So those are, there's a lot, there's certain things you got to be very careful about, you know, when you're with rewards and you can, you can look under their, you know, other things that they don't, they you, that are prohibited um and like i said when you're pricing stuff you know be fair when people think about backing your project they're asking themselves whether your rewards are a good trade for what they're contributing the most popular pledge on kickstarter is around 25 bucks so it's handy to offer something substantial around that level and then offer a range of, a re of rewards some backers can spare 100 bucks some 20 some five, each pledge is important to your project. So make sure there's something worthwhile at every level, even simple $1 rewards. You'll need to produce and deliver every, every reward though. Um, so think through each tier and make sure your budget works. And I recommend limiting your reward tiers to five or six or, you know, seven. Don't, I wouldn't go over, you know, don't, don't get much beyond, you know, seven or eight, you know, but keep it, keep it simple. Try to keep your, try to keep it simple. I've seen some that are extremely complicated, you know? Um, and the thing is, so if you reach your goal, which that is what's crazy, I had no idea what was going to happen. Like I've never done a Kickstarter before. And so on day one of my campaign, I needed $11,000, you know, 
and uh, I made I made it on day I made 15,000 on the first day and I was I couldn't believe it I was just I, and you saw it climbing as and so once that happened it's like okay so I, you have stretch goals and so I had this 14 thousand five hundred dollar stretch goal so if we reach that then all books upgrade to a slip case you know everybody gets a slip case everybody that pledges for a book gets a slip case and then if we make fifteen thousand five hundred all books upgrade to a spot gloss cover title so we hit that and then if we get 17 you know seventeen thousand uh, dollars exclusive what follows is true posters that are included and so that's a small poster that goes into the slip case you know, and then if we hit 30,000, there is an exclusive what follows is true showcase book. I did not hit that because I got almost 29,000, which I was actually glad because I was so, I, I would have had to have put together like a little showcase book. I could have done it, but it would have just been a lot of extra work. And so I was completely happy that it didn't hit that since I was, I knew it was kind of, you know, reaching its its pinnacle at that time you know um wait how did you know it was reaching the pinnacle at that time no like, I how just, did you know <laughs> well no, no no i was just saying i i learned that like once you kind of get towards um it's like so there's sort of this ebb and flow it's like your first day is a big day it's like it gets really high it's like a lot of people are you know and then and then um and then you get a lot a lot of support and then all of a sudden it kind of it, it goes down, you know, and then you don't, you, there's not many pledges for a few days. And then towards the middle of it, for some reason, it starts to go up again. And mine, and that's what happened. It started to go up towards the middle. I mean, you keep promoting it throughout, but, and then it kind of goes back down. And then right towards the end, it starts climbing again, right, you know, because it's like, it's about up, but it was like, I was at like 28,000. And it was like, I mean, unless somebody would have just, thrown out you know like pledged a thousand dollars um which i i i didn't think that was going to happen because i i figured people that were going to do that would do that early on and i was right about that it did climb a little bit but it was more incremental it wasn't a massive you know thing like that so um yeah i mean I, you never know i mean things happen and and who knows like it but um everything that I was reading was like, was it, it was pretty much happening the way that I, I read how it happens, you know, like, uh, it's kind of, it's, it, there's a, it peaks at the beginning and then you, well, I mean, you have this big daily deluge of, of support at the beginning and then it goes down and then it, it wanes a bit and then, it, and then you had, then it spikes right in the middle, goes down and then it kind of goes back up towards the very end. And that's because those, and those are usually just the people that were like, well, I'll get around to it. Or, oh, because you, you, because that's one of the things too. You always like Kickstarter lets you, like you can, your campaign can be longer than a month. Like you could do like a month and a half, two months. I, I don't know how, what I think you can do like a month and a half or something like that or uh, eight weeks or something. I'm not sure exactly how long, but you can do at least a month and a half. But I, everything I've read says don't go over a month because you want to give your campaign that sense of urgency. So people, otherwise they'll just be like, Oh, I'll get to it, you know? And, and then they just don't, you know? Um, and so if there's that sense of urgency, then you'll do better. And so shorter campaigns, tend to do better than longer campaigns longer campaigns just don't do that well um so anyway oh and also since i worked with print ninja they offered a special where if you include their logo and it's this logo right here which is a, I, I think it's a cool logo um and and uh which in and printed by print ninja in in your campaign like on the actual kickstarter page they throw in extra books for free. And so I got like an extra like 50 books or something like that for free because I just did that, you know? Um, in fact, uh, Print Ninja really liked my project so much that they off they threw in an extra like 50 more books just because mine ended up being one that they actually, uh, now they actually use my book as one of their samples. So if you go to Print Ninja and you want to do like a hardcover book, there's a chance that when you uh, request a sample book, 
you might get my book in the mail, like as, as there's one of their samples for that, you know, that caliber of book. And so, and that, which is just more advertising for, you know, for the project. And so another thing that you want to do on your Kickstarter campaign is have a, a video, make a compelling video for your Kickstarter project. I made this spooky little video. It's a trailer and I made it on iMovie. I found like we can we can watch it in a bit if you like, but I I think a lot of times when I try to show things like that, there's a lag time with the sound. It doesn't well on Zoom, and so we might I might ask that people do that after, just on their free time and check out the the trailer. Um, but making a video is a great way to introduce yourself and give people a, a closer look at what you're working on. It doesn't have to be super slick. Um, some videos have a do-it-yourself feel. Um, some people, they just, it's like them. Like they just have themselves, you know, saying, telling about the project and, and, and uh, what, their, what, their, what their goals are, you know, and just being transparent and upfront. And people really like that because you're being vulnerable and you're not, you're, you're just, they can see that you're just a person trying to, you know, make this, with this, you know, has this creative endeavor, you know, and you're trying to make this product. And and when you do that kind of thing, people are really, can be really responsive, you know. Mine, however, I didn't really show myself. I, 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 I have, uh, I show a little bit of my drawings of myself and I, like, I have myself in my, right here, you know, I kind of drew myself. Um, but I wanted mine to be more of like a spooky, almost like a trailer, you know? And so I put together this kind of spooky trailer about my, my project. And uh, I did that in uh, iMovie. I figured out how iMovie works. And so, which is a pretty accessible, you know, if you have a, if you're, if you have Apple software and all, that's a pretty accessible uh, film editing software. And so anyway, that was a, so that, that was, really helpful, you know, and I'm able to kind of share that and my trailer with people. And then, and then you, like I said, there's also the author, you have your, your section on your Kickstarter page where you tell uh, the backers about yourself. And here's where I tell about me, myself, you know, and uh, this is really just kind of my about. It's like, I kind of ripped this from, I think I ripped most of this from my uh, website on my, my about page. And in fact, I think I have that picture that I, I, I drew of myself at my drawing table. And then they also asked that uh, you do shipping, like you, you have a shipping section and that's where you basically tell about your estimated delivery. When do you expect to deliver the rewards to backers? Um, for each tier, tier, choose a date you're confident about hitting and don't be afraid to give yourself breathing room. It's better to under promise and over deliver for complex projects. It can be useful to stagger the estimated delivery dates for different reward tiers. So sending out rewards in batches over a period of time. So anyway, don't just make sure that you, you know, pace yourself when you're doing this type of thing and just don't over promise. Don't, don't just, it's better. Like I said, it's better to under promise and over deliver. So and as far as shipping goes, as you add on each reward or, or add on, you'll be able to specify your shipping costs. These expenses can sneak up on you. So try um, figuring, you know, figuring that into your, uh, you know, into your expenses, you know. Um, and they have a funding calculator to, and you can kind of, Figure out, figure that out with your potential backers and whatnot. Um, so anyway, um, these are these are little things to think about. Shipping is just one of those things that a lot of times people don't really think about shipping costs. So always make sure you add that to your funding goal. You know, just figure out what the shipping will be once you have like you know. Once you kind of have an idea of uh, how much the, the book's going to cost and once you've got, you know, then they can kind of, whoever you're working with can kind of tell you, estimate your shipping costs for you. Um, hey, Sean, when you're creating a budget, do you do that thing that like some of the builders or 
developers do where you add like 20% or create sort of a cushion in your budget because you're bad at math? Well, you're probably <laughs> not, but I am bad at oh, math. Oh, no, so I'm horrible at math. I'm an artist. I draw. <laughs> I don't really, I don't do it. I am, I'm so bad at math. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I always go a little bit like, um, yeah, I tend to give myself that little bit of a cushion just because there are so many little hidden costs that you just don't really think about, you know, um, they just sneak up on you, you know, um, uh, you know, packing the books. I had to go, I, I went through Uline and I would get these little, you know, like things to pack, pack the books in. I, I bought an impulse sealer and a, uh, shrink wrap and an impulse like one of those heat guns and an impulse sealer and like so I could like shrink wrap all the books um and then I put them in these like I got these like you know I had to figure out like what what's the what's the shipping what type of uh, shipping uh, container do I want to use and I found you know they're a perfect size for like books and that was all through Uline so Uline is great if you ever if you're doing anything like this for like all your shipping um, but yeah, to answer your question, like I said, yeah, you're absolutely right. I always did give myself that little bit of a cushion, like 20% or whatever, just so I can, because hidden costs, I'm, I'm telling you, they will sneak up on you, you know? Um, so anyway, so now that my pre-launch Kickstarter page was ready to go, I started to, uh, set a launch date and I started promoting the book and the Kickstarter launch to make as many people aware as possible before I launched. Um, I had write-ups in various magazines and newspapers throughout Northwest Arkansas and as well as Little Rock. Um, and so, I mean, what I did is I just cold call like every, everybody, you know, I was like contacting so many people about this thing. Um, I'm sure I was bugging you as well, Scarlett, during that, <laughs> during that time. <laughs> I know, I know. I was like bugging everybody. And, I, and that's one of those things you just have to get over that. Like, I know that it's not, it's, 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 and I, and I still do it today, like, because it's a self-generated project. I'm always calling like independent bookstores and asking if they'd like to carry my book, you know? And it's like, you just have to get over the, you know, the shyness of that or 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 if people are going to tell you no big deal it's no big deal it's just a another no on the road to that inevitable yes you know um but yeah here's some of the this was like in uh the idle class magazine they they did a cody ford and different one uh uh they did a great job like they they promoted it uh went to KUAF I did a talk with Kyle Kellum up there on Ozarks at Large and Kyle's great in fact I actually talked to Kyle like 15 years before about this book like when I was first working on this because I was actually there for something else but then we talked about it. he's like what are you working on now and I talked about my book so it was wild to actually be on you know talking to Kyle like over a decade later about this finished project, you know, product, you know, having this product out there and it was ready to go, or it was almost ready to go. The Kickstarter was coming up. And so anyway, um, yeah, the Democratic Arkansas, uh, the Northwest Arkansas Democratic Gazette, Fayetteville Public Library. I gave a talk at like all the libraries throughout Northwest Arkansas and, and, uh, Cityscapes, magazine, so many places. I mean, I also, and that's whenever I was, uh, I uh, did the, uh, had work in galleries, the like Bradbury Art Museum in Jonesboro. I did a, I, they had a, uh, kind of like what Randy Duncan did at the Cal's, the, they had a collective uh, group show where it was various graphic novelists. Although this one was national, it wasn't just relegated to the state of Arkansas. It was, it was artists all around the country. And so I'm pretty sure, I think it was like, yeah, I think it was, it was national. And so that was really great to be in that. And so, and, and uh, 
I also made these little, oh, I, oh hold on before I get to that. Um, where is, oh yeah, there they are. So I also, uh, speaking of Randy Duncan, he he's a professor down in, uh, um, near Little Rock. He teaches at, uh, is it Euler or Arkadel? I'm, I'm not, do you know Scarlett where Randy? I think it was in Arkadelphia. Arkadelphia. Arkadelphia, yeah, Arkadelphia, I believe. And anyway, he's he's put out books like these creating comics, his journalism, memoir, and nonfiction. He's he's done a lot of great books. It's like uh, comics is literature, and he teaches classes on that. And uh, he actually featured my book, like he put it in in one of his textbooks. And so that was, and that was before you know when I was still working on the book. So that was a great way to sort of promote, you know, and also promote the book, get, get the word out. And what I was getting at is I also made these little um, uh, preview books. Uh, so I basically, there's a company, there's a printer in, uh, another one in Chicago called Mixam. Mixam is the name. And uh, they, uh, they printed out these little I had them print out these little preview books that showcase the first 30 pages of the book as a way to kind of ignite curiosity and interest in the project. Um, and then on the back, I had, on the back cover, I had uh, information about, you know, the Kickstarter campaign. And so, and how to subscribe to my newsletter, all that kind of stuff. And that really helped out a lot. And, and I also learned like when you're doing one of those kind of things, make sure that you sell it. Like these were just $5. I initially, I was going to just give them away, but um, don't do that because that means that makes it feel like your book isn't worth anything. There's a psychology to that. People actually do want to pay for something. They don't want to, you know, it makes your book worth something. And so and, and this mix and did a really good job. Like these preview books were great. I still have like one or two floating around, but they had a really nice thick cover and the page quality was really nice. Um, and they were just like these small, small preview books, you know. Um, anyway, but yeah, I, every time I would give a talk at a library. So like I said, that whole, probably for like, I don't know, the year before the Kickstarter campaign, or at least six months before, I was doing all these talks, doing everything, to just telling newspapers and all over the state, just doing as much as I could. I even did a thing down in, uh, oh God, where where is it near Little Rock? Lone Oak? Is it called Lone Oak? Yeah. Yeah, Lone Oak. I did a thing in Lone Oak because um, I knew somebody down there and I did a, I, and uh, an educator down there. I did, and so I, I was selling my preview books down there. I did, I mean, and, and that was actually when the campaign was going on, you know, and so, but I was still selling the preview books, you know. I've sold all of them. I, I, I had like 500 of those printed out. So I went through all 500, except for one. I've got one copy, so 499 of them. I, but I just, you know, sell those things all over. Um, and that was reasonable. They were reasonable. It was like, I don't know, under that was maybe under a thousand dollars to print all those. Um, um, and then this is uh this is the inside of the of the preview book. You can kind of see how it's like I had information on the inside cover as well as how to pledge. Having general information on how to pledge is very helpful because. Uh, many people have never pledged on Kickstarter campaigns. That's one thing to think about. There are a lot of people that have never done anything with Kickstarter. Some people don't even know what Kickstarter is to this day. So, and hey, that that makes sense. You know, I mean, there's if you just haven't done it, you just, I mean, there's so many things out there nowadays. I can so many things go past me that I don't know about that everybody else knows about. So, um, I found that you know, actually telling people how to pledge, you know. Uh, telling them how the mechanics of the actual page work um, is very, very helpful. So anything you can do, like so click, click the green back this pledge button on the page. Alternatively, you can scroll down and select a reward tier. If you don't want a specific reward, select a pledge without a reward and just walk people through it, you know. Um, anyway, it's very, very helpful. 
um, before launching your project, your project, it's a good idea uh, to look for other projects that are similar to yours and back then. So this is something I didn't even think about until, you know, reading all these books on Kickstarter and going through that po podcast. But it is a community. And so if you just jump on the community and you don't, if you don't give to that community or, or become part of the community, you're kind of looked at it as sort of like an interloper, you know, it's like, so people will like kind of call you out on that. They won't want to support you, but if you're, they'll actually look and see if you're supporting other projects. So you don't have to give a lot, just enough to show that you're not taking advantage of the platform. And you know what I mean? So uh, this makes you more of a contributing member of the Kickstarter community. Um, also remember, you know, an open hand both gives and receives, but a closed fist does neither. So keep your hand open, you know. Um, like I said, my book's spooky, so I chose the month of no October. You know, that's what I backed it to, you know, from my initial April release. Um, the campaign ran from October 1st through, through Halloween, and it ended on Halloween at midnight. At 7 a.m., I launched the campaign on October 1st, 7 a.m. I needed 11300 to reach my funding goal and made over 15000 on the first day. And by the end of the month, I raised almost $29,000. Um, and I was completely amazed that the campaign went so well. On the first day, I received the Kickstarter projects we love badge. And so that's one of those things that sometimes you, I, they don't really know how it happens, but you may get the projects we love badge. And that also can kind of help, you know, it's just like Kickstarter given your, 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 uh, your project, their approval. And then other people will be like, oh, hey, Kickstarter likes that. I'm sure a lot of it has to do with the fact that it was making so much money and they're like, oh, we love that project, you know. Uh, so take a look at some other existing projects we love and you'll see well-crafted videos, striking images, and a clear plan. It, it is true, though. All, all the projects they love, it's like, it's, it's, it's not just the project, it's not just the book, but the whole, your whole campaign. And, and being not only creative with the project, but creative with your, you know, your entire campaign. And so, uh, yeah, during, the, I, I was still uh, doing preview book signings and getting articles into newspapers. And like I said, just all over the place. And so this is that I teach up at, I, I'm an adjunct uh, instructor up at uh, NWAC in Benville. And so they, I was able to get it in their college newspaper. You know, they they did a thing, and the um, I got the Artist 360. Uh, I was a recipient of the Artist 360 program, as well as the Arkansas Arts Council <clears throat> uh, recipient. And uh, both these, uh, yeah, I mean, the, both these grants and the Arkansas Arts Council Fellowship that were amazing. Um, both of these, I mean, this helped out so much. Like I said, it all went into the, it just, I, I put, like I still do, like all the money that I make off these books just goes back into the machine, you know? And, uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I'm on my second printing. And so anyway, um, and then in, uh, um, in, in, uh, the, the books finally arrived in June of 2022. And so this is what it looked like. This is what, <laughs> this is what the thousand books look like. So I was kind of curious as to what that was even going to look like. So I made sure to have space in the garage. Luckily, like my wife and I tend to not, our, our garage isn't cluttered. Like we try to keep it real organized. So we did have space, you know, but we, I made sure that we had space uh, it cleared out, you know, so I, I could, keep the books in there, you know, and then after that, I, I, uh, I moved the, the books into our foyer, you know, in our house, this is our, our old house, but, um, we've moved since we actually just moved recently, but, um, the next step of the process was transferring the boxes from garage into the house. So I, I basically transformed our foyer into a shipping station 
complete with uh, the boxes, wrap, impulse sealer, and industrial heat gun. And once again, there's my cat Buzz, our cat up there. He's kind of overseeing the whole project. He's like the, you know, <laughs> yeah, the, what would you call it? The, I guess he's my shipping manager right there. I'm not sure. Um, after that, I started organizing rewards, shrink wrapping books, and then packing them into these craft boxes. And so these are, you know, basically at these little boxes here. I actually made little stamps. I made stamps that, uh, so I stamped each one of these boxes with what follows is true, since that's kind of the header. So uh, that was kind of a little, I always like, I want it to be like when they get it in the mail, it's kind of a fun experience, you know? So it's not just a boring little thing. And, I, and like I said, I also shrink wrapped all the books. So it protected the books. And then you can kind of see this is what the hardcover and the special edition slipcase look like. And so also, if you're doing a book, make sure your book has an ISB number before you have the book printed. Um, I went through a company called Bowker, B-O-W-K-E-R, to generate my ISBN number. I also got a Library of Congress number for my book as well. This identification number is assigned by the Library of Congress for books in its uh, catalog collection. So the numbers used by librarians to locate specific books in the national databases. So the library first began printing uh, catalog cards for titles in 1898. So anyway, the ISBN number helps customers identify and order the exact book they want to purchase. So libraries, bookstores, and online retailers, distributors, and wholesales. Wholesalers depend on the, the both these. So um, definitely, definitely make sure you get an ISBN number before you know you print your book. So um, after fulfilling all my back rewards, I then started promoting the book and selling it on my website store. Um, as well as local and regional bookstores throughout the state. Um, and now, now outside of the state, I've actually got a this, at the end of April, I'm going to be at an independent bookstore in uh, Oklahoma City. They've actually got some of my books and they, they got uh, artwork from my book that, and I'm going to be doing a book signing at the end of the, um, end of the month. Um, and then in July, July 1st, I had a book launch. This is July 1st of last year. And this was at the Community Creative Center in Fayetteville, Arkansas. The event was very well attended. I had banners made and I used to, uh, yeah, I had these banners made that I was able to like, there's a place called Sinorama in uh, mm -hmm. Johnson, right next to Fayetteville. Um, so I went there and had these big banners printed up. So there I am with my banners. I've got my books. These are prints, that, some of the little prints that I had left over. I, I, I need to get more of those printed, my small prints um, that people can buy. Um, I continue to do book signings and author talk. Here I am, author talks. Here I am at Barnes & Noble and Rogers and Pearl's Books in Fayetteville. Um, and I, now I found that it's difficult getting into uh Bookstores with self-published venture, especially the bigger bookstores, like on the left, like Barnes and Noble, is a lot of times those those bookstores look for a distributor supplier, like and and you want to have like a distributor like Ingrams or Baker and Taylor. So I've mostly gotten mine into independent bookstores at this moment, but I was just able to get it into. I talked to the Barnes and Noble in Fayetteville yesterday, and I think they're trying to expand their more regional books. So I'll probably get it in there soon, but I also find getting on podcasts is a way to get the word out about the book. And I try finding podcasts that relate to the content found in this book. Here I was, this was like the right now, and this was at the writer's colony. And that was Joy Clark. And she was also a, uh, she did, she was the, she did this, she does this podcast and she was also a fellow recipient of both the Artist 360 and the Arkansas Arts Council uh, Fellowship. So that was, and that was really great to get to talk with Joy um, because we both were recipients of those. And uh, 
and she's super nice and and uh, she's all over the place as well with her writing, creative writing. Um, I was on this Ghost Insight. Now this is like a more of a national podcast. It's like uh, about ghosts. My book's not really in, about ghosts, but you could kind of look at it as a ghost origin story, I guess, you know, um, because the Crescent Hotel is haunted. So my book hits a lot of different uh, genres and different, you know, so I could, I can go to like, uh, I can go to literary festivals, I can go to graphic novel festivals, I can go to true crime festivals, um, horror even, you know, like there's uh, paranormal, whatever, you know, there's a lot of different avenues. I was even asked by my printer, my art printer, if I'd be interested in having my work for my book displayed on a wall in downtown Joplin, Missouri as part of a program called the Downtown Art Wall. And this helps promote public art and artists bringing a variety of styles for all they enjoy. So yeah, I actually have this up on a wall right now. I, I'm not sure if it's up still, but it's been, it was up for quite a while in downtown Joplin, just right in the heart of downtown Joplin. Um, I've given a lot of author talks. This is from the Fayetteville Public Library. And, and many of these are live streamed. Um, and like I said, I had work at the Fayetteville Public Library. These are some of my original pages of the library, as well as Cal's. This is at Cal's that Scarlett was talking about, downtown Little Rock. And I was, yeah, I was at the, I was on a panel at the Cal's the Literary Festival. Um, Oh, and I think, oh yeah, Scarlett, I also had some art at the historical ham, historical art, or what's it called? This Historic Arkansas Museum. That's it, Historical Arkansas Museum. Yes, yeah, so I had it at the, yeah. And uh, in fact, yeah, there I am with that over on the right. That's That was at the Historical Arkansas Museum. And they have books, they have my books there as well. Um, and I also, Norman Baker, the charlatan that, you know, started the cancer hospital, he's from, he was from Muscatine, Iowa. So I did a lot of research up in Muscatine, Muscatine Iowa. And so I had my art at the Muscatine Art Center as well. Um, and on top of that, I also post. And every week I post art and events to social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That's pretty much it. I honestly don't spend much time on social media. I have a file of posts ready to go so I don't have to linger in the platform all that long. But I look at it as another way to help promote the book and book related events. Um, so I'm always just trying to keep, you know, the way and just kind of stay, you know, keep, let people know what's going on, you know. Um, and I'm always thinking of different ways I can promote my book. As I mentioned earlier, displaying my original pages in galleries is a great way to get out the word about the book and for people to see the actual pages and learn a bit about the process and the work that goes into such an endeavor. I've made prints from selected pages from that book that I sell on my website. And I also sell at some galleries like at Zark's Gallery in Eureka Springs. I have some prints there right now. Uh, I also made a set of postcards that I set on my web, sell on my website and book festivals. And so anyway, I do that. But one thing to remember when you're doing any kind of project like that is this right here. It's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Just try to remember to stay calm and just tell yourself this and just do a little bit each day. That's all you have to do. Work towards the goal. Like I said, it's like planting seeds and every day you're just adding a little bit of water and eventually that tree will grow and that tree will eventually bear fruit. And so, and, and, and have fun with it, you know? It's, it's be creative, because that's what, one of the things I've learned as an artist is being creative it extends beyond just the actual art itself. It's, it's in your whole marketing campaign, your, the way you promote your whole project. And, uh, and, uh, Anyway, yeah, I just in and uh, don't 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 get too, you know, just take care of yourself when you're doing this kind of thing. Don't just do a little bit each day and you'll be fine, you know. And if anyone has any kind of questions, you can always give me, you know, hit me up on my 
my, I, if you go to my website on my contact page, if something comes up after this and you're like, oh, I wish I'd asked him this question, I have a contact form on my website. It's just seanfitzgibbon.com. And that's also where you can buy the book. If anyone's interested, I have a store there and you can, I have prints available, books available. And uh, I can, if anyone, if y'all want to see, like I can show you all like, uh, I can stop that share. And then I can also go to, uh, um, let's see here. Let's see, let me, I've got so much stuff right opened up right here. Let me, uh, so I can show you all really quick if you want to see. This is my, uh, so let me, uh, really, I know we're, we got a, a little bit of time left, right, Scarlett? Are we just, um, yeah, we have uh, about 30 minutes left. If, okay. if anybody has any questions, feel free to um, show yourselves and ask. Yeah. Um, here I can, if you guys want to see really quick and well, while you're thinking of anything to ask. So on my website here, you can see how I've got my store and then like, there's the, there's like, you know, the book and then my slipcase. I only have like 30 of these left and, and there's postcards and then I have prints, but then here's like, you know, information, you know, about here's, you can get, you know, get on my newsletter but I also have my Kickstarter campaign. And so that, that is one of those things, like I said, it's still up and it'll always be up, you know? And there, here you can see how I, I put my page together. Um, here's my little, my, the, this uh, trailer. I'm afraid to do that right now because sometimes there's like a lag with the, you know, like when, with the sound when mm -hmm. you show it. So it might be kind of weird, I don't know. Um, but here you can see $28,803. That was that my, that's how, what was pledged out of 11,300. So, um, and here you can see where I talk about the project, the book, and here I have some, some images from the book, some of the pages, you know, the art. Um, so you when, know, you're, when you're building your long-term strategy you were saying that this is a marathon and not a sprint like yeah. how, how do you start like I'm looking at this I'm like wow this seems like a lot like how do you build that strategy and then do the first initial steps to sort of take that plunge I know it's like you, a fight you, you mean like once the book's finished or doing the book like what are doing you doing the no doing the kickstarter I'm looking at this oh. kickstarter and All like right. what right right I know I know um, and so that well, and that's the thing, you can get on Kickstarter and you can just fiddle around with it, you know, like go to go start building up. And that's the thing, you can start building up your page. And, and so I just started to kind of play around and figure out how it works. And I also started looking at other Kickstarter campaigns. And just, you know, it gives you like, you can go through and like, you know, you have these little cells or whatever it's it, it's very self-explanatory like where you, you how you can build it up you know you kind of have this empty uh page and then you can just drag and drop things in there and you can you can you know you, you know at, tell your story and you can do all this kind of stuff like it, it's very self-explanatory and so like i said i i actually found one i found a campaign that i thought looked really good and i kind of modeled it off of that I can't even remember exactly which one it is right now. It was like this other, it was like a graphic novel project. It was almost like a, kind of like a fantasy sort of a thing, but it was like by a guy that does, he's like a animator or a concept artist out of LA. And it looked amazing. It looked really good. The product did, but also their, their, their page was laid out very nicely. And honestly, I, I kind of used their, layout like i i didn't theirs had like a splatter effect you know and then they would do they would print like i i i gave it my own look but i was just kind of looking at how they did it you know um and so my undergrad is in graphic design so i was able to kind of incorporate some of that you know into this so like i wanted to my make my like my reward tiers to look like tape 
like it's actually like tape. So I actually <laughs> stuck tape down and took a picture and then I actually typed over it. This is the font that I use for my what follows is true. And um, but like I said, I was looking at this other, I was even looking at their font for like this, and then I was trying to match it up just because it was simple. And they did the same kind of thing for the reward tiers. And they had the little plus in the middle. And so I just kind of did that sort of same thing. Where did you get your photographs of your books? These look pretty professional. You know what? I actually, I, well, okay. So I did not have the books ready yet. Like I didn't have the books, right? So right. you know what I did? I actually took a book, like a hardcover book of ours and just laid it down on my, on the table, lit it really well. And then I, uh, I, uh, um, well, this is where it gets into like Photoshop. So if you know how to work, use Photoshop, like I basically grafted, you know, at my cover, like this is not the actual, this is what I was projecting it to look like, you know, like I thought it would look like, and it does, it looks very close to that. I showed you all, but I, I did all this. I did all, all of this. I even gave it the little drop shadow, but like even this open book here, this was like another book. It was like some another book that I basically grafted the pages onto it because I didn't have the book yet. So I had to make like this little mock-up and that's what that is. It's a little mock-up, just like all this was just kind of a mock-up. Like, like this thing, I had to just take a generic iPad, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, I think just some generic iPad I found like on a, on a trademark free, you know, like a, a copyright free, like, generic ipad image that i was able to like use and then pop my thing onto it you know um and so yeah and like but like i said scarlett honestly i was looking at one i i looked at a successful uh campaign because i went through a bunch of them and that's a, one of the best things you can do is find people that are doing it and they do a great job and i mean this one was like i think this guy had a really uh big following because like he was like already like a big uh and like an animator or something out of like you know los angeles and so he was and he had a big following from like doing these these films i don't even know exactly what it was i can't i i could look it up and maybe find it but it looked similar to this in the layout so i was just kind of like and they did extremely well like their campaign was like they made like a hundred thousand dollars or something crazy and uh and so i was like well i'm going to kind of use that basic and like this is how they were kind of they even use the plus you know and and it's just and 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 so that's what i was doing i was just kind of looking at how they did it um and i just and i tried to make it as simple as can be and there's only you know just the and that's it and then you have your stretch goals and like i said i kind of added these as i was going as as i went you know because you can still fiddle around with this while the Kickstarter's going, you know. Um, and you can also get into like your, you have your campaign, you know, and you can get into the guts of it. And you can kind of like. Um, Does this have analytics? Can you see how many people looked at it? But Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can do like analytics and all that kind of stuff. Like you can see like how how it's. There's updates. See, like here's like when I add little updates here, and um, I'd have to get into the. I'd have to. I think what I'd have to do though is get into my. I'd have to log in because I'm logged out right now. Um, it's okay. You don't have to do that. I was just curious because. Oh you know, yeah, they they do have analytics because yeah, and you can kind of see how it's doing. Um. And yeah, they have all that. I mean, it gets pretty um, involved. Like you can kind of, however involved you want to kind of be with it. I I tried to make my, like I said, as simple as I can. Some of them get really complicated, but I don't, I think it's better to just keep it, you know, keep it as simple as can be. Like I, I like, you know, like Apple, like the way they do that, everything's always so simple, you know? Uh, and I wanted it to be kind of like that, you know, and I like, um, 
say life here, but I just kept posting. And that's the thing. I can even still post on this because I still have all these followers and all these people that, and, and sometimes I'll post on Kickstarter. I can, and see, that's the thing. When you, when you're, when your campaign successful, you still have access to it. I can still utilize this as a way to um, let people know what's because it's a community. And so like whenever, like I'll probably, I guess the last one I did was in February. So I should be doing that a little bit more. I'm kind of, I've been so busy with everything, but I should probably, you know, let people know about like some of my shows coming up and like, oh yeah, yeah. Like the thing up at 21C, cause I'm going to have mm -hmm. smart parts there at 21C. Um, and then like in October and November at Monticello, University of Arkansas down there, um, you know, um, and it's, yeah, so it's another resource that you can kind of, you know, utilize. Um, and I always have little images with all the things I do. Um, well, thanks for sharing. Um, yeah. Did, did anyone want to talk about their projects or ask any questions? Yeah. Um, here, I can stop sharing that. Uh, how do I? Yeah, does anyone have any questions at all? Like I haven't heard from anyone. Or oh wait. I have too I have too many to list out, but the four major ones I've already made cover the start. Starting for making oh. Hey Maria, do you want to unmute and talk a little bit about what you're doing? Yeah. Oh yeah, Maria, you're muted if you're. I can tell it must be mostly writers because y'all are all, I mean, of... Veronica's not, I don't know what's up with that. She's usually there. It's kind of <laughs> loud. Okay. <laughs> oh, what do you plan to do with the project moving forward? That is a question. Oh, yeah. Um, I, well, I uh, I'm actually, uh, like I said, what follows is true. This one's what follows is true. Crescent Hotel. I haven't. I'm working on another book, and I'm going to keep doing a series. This is going to be the beginning of a series of books. What follows is true, and uh, they all involve different places that I've been that have strange histories, and that they're not. It's not necessarily just relegated to the Ozark region. I'll go back to the Ozark region from time to time, but I like to travel, and so. Um, the the next one is actually going to be three different places and the, and there's going to be a main main place and they all kind of have a, a sort of a labyrinth theme like maze sort of theme and so um, the main the main one on the next one is a place that I have always been fascinated but much like the Crescent Hotel fascinated with since I was a kid and that's the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose California and I've been out there a few times and I'm and I'm going to be telling the the true story about that because there's a lot of lore with Sarah Winchester and the Winchester house, but the true story is even more fascinating than all the ghost stories. I mean, it's the ghost stories are fascinating. I'll tell that, but I'll also tell the actual, some of the actual stories. It's absolutely fascinating. And then I'll, I'm also going to be talking about the uh, Island of the Dolls in Mexico city. Uh, and that's going to be one of my, which is a really creepy place where there's dolls hanging all over this little island and the hanging gardens of Mexico or the floating gardens of Mexico. And uh, that's a very strange place with a very strange, spooky history. And then another one is uh, the Palazzo Dario in Venice, Italy, another place that I've been there. I've been there a couple of times. And so I'm, and it's a cursed palazzo. It's been around since the 14 hundreds and it's ever most of the people that have lived there died mysteriously and so i'm going to kind of be telling that story so i'm and that's and and so i'm working on that i'm working with another uh working with someone on this next one to kind of help speed the process along and so um and then yeah and then i'm going to be doing the third i'm just going to keep going with these and so um 
because I've always loved, I love travel and I love to tell stories. And I love, I love, I love this idea of like telling a story and then I want people to go to this place. I want to tell about these, this strange places. Oh yeah. The Island of Dolls and May. Oh, cool. The doll. Yeah, that's great. Um, um, I love that. I'm seeing that on the feed there. Uh, um, oh, music for a podcast interview. I'd love to connect. Oh, great. Yeah, that sounds great. Veronica, yeah. You know, that sounds fantastic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, shoot me an email. What were the books that you read? You said earlier you read three books. What were they? Three, oh, gosh. Oh, man. I, the two that are up there are... You know what? I can tell you two of them because I put two of them. I honestly, I'd have to. Your first Kickstarter campaign by Vilius Stanislava, Stanislav, Slovatis, Vilius Stanislavatis, and then crowdfunded the proven crowdfunding system by Mark Picota. And I cannot for the life of me remember what I. I have to dig it out. I don't need to mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to go through my like Amazon, like, because I think I got it on Amazon, but I honestly, I can't, I can, yeah, there's, I cannot tell you, I cannot, uh, there was a third one though, but I cannot for the light. It's something like, it might've just been like Kickstarter for dummies or something like that. You know, it was very, but there's definitely those two, the, your first Kickstarter campaign by Vilius Stanislavatius. I'm, I'm bitchering his last yeah. name, sorry. Um, and then crowdfunded by Mark Hakota. But those two, yeah. Uh, and then, like I said, I cannot for the life of me. I, I could find it, but it might, it'd probably take me 20 minutes. To, I'm sorry. Oh, that's, that's okay. That's, uh, <laughs> people might want to, to delve into some of those books too. Because, I mean, your your Kickstarter does look pretty professionally done. It looks, it looks really nice. So Thank you. I did it all myself. I... And I, uh, like I said, though, I was, lo I was looking at one as far as, no, I didn't copy it. I just copied the format. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. the way they laid it out and how simple, like that's what I was, that's what I was looking at. And that's one of the best things you can do is find other, find people that are successful and then just sort of emulate kind of what they're doing. You don't have to just copy it, but you can sort of, you know, rework it, you know, in your, the way you, you know, in you're 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 using your own uh voice you know um and also like i said like you know once you've kind of done something you know build up this brand you know it's like i years ago i went to this it was this wonderful workshop at this it was called artist as brand and that's by a wonderful illustrator his name's greg spalanka and that was a wonderful uh opportunity he gives these workshops he still does and, and it's like just kind of building up your brand. And, and that's kind of what, what I've been doing, you know, is just kind of building up this, this brand. Like, like I said, I, you just think about what it is you like and, and how you want to, uh, you know, how you want to showcase your, you know, your, uh, your, your, your likes and what you, you know, what your, your interests, you know, and my interests tend to be, you know, I love to travel. And so it's like, I love history and I love strange history. And so that's what these books are all about, you know, and, and, uh, and, uh, and I love documentaries. And so, like I said, it's kind of this, it's almost like these books are just kind of like a, uh, you know, I've always, I've loved, I love art. I teach art. I teach art history. And so I'm just kind of marrying all my loves together and just making these visual, these visual uh, histories, you know, that are very, tell a very strange history, you know, a lot, oftentimes kind of spooky, you know, I, I love, I love kind of, unlike Scarlet, I tend to dive into some of the spookier, mysterious sides of things, you know, but. Oh, I like, I like that. I'm just okay. saying, you're probably not going to go and go ghost, ghost hunting. And oh, okay. <laughs> right. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, and, and so I just kind of like, I, I tend to lean on that, you know, that's what I like. And so I just, um, and, I, and like I said, one of the best things I, you know, the best, 
compliments I get or when people tell me, hey, I read the book and now I want to go to Eureka Springs, you know, we're going to go to the Crescent, we're going to go to Eureka, we're going to just go, you know, check out the town and how, and, did, how uh, did the Crescent uh, react to your book? The, you the know, hotel itself? I, you know, I, it's, I, I, I'm still kind of working on that. I'm, I'm not really sure how to kind of, the, the, it, it's, uh, the, well, the, the, the owner, Elise Rennick, she loves the book and she's, she's already, um, she purchased a few of the books, you know, and so I think she's given some as gifts to like her grandkids and different ones. And so, uh, um, but yeah, as far as like, I, um, I'm trying to, you know, kind of get into certain places in Eureka Street. I, I think it'd be great fit, like in, in either the Crescent or like, I know there's other, there's another, there's a bookshop in there that's within the Crescent. Um, and there's some bookstores in Eureka Springs. Like right now I've got like at the, uh, Arkansas or the Eureka Springs Historical Museum. And that's like a really good fit for the book. Cause it is a historical book, you know, um, but yeah, I would I would think that it would also do very well at the Crescent because I've had so many people tell me they now want to go to the Crescent Hotel after they've read the book. And I love that because it is such a great place and it's a great, uh, great town. It's such an unusual, interesting town, you know, and I'm just drawn to places like that, you know. Um, and I hope other people are as well, you know, and I hope they respond the same, you know, to the to these stories so does anyone else have any questions at all or let's see here i might oh actually i think um i i i'm working with the writers colony at dairy hollow in eureka springs about doing a workshop there um and this will be more on like uh putting a graphic nonfiction together and like what I did, and then going through the whole process, uh, research to actually, you know, putting together your funding, your, your book. And so it's going to be like a, a few days, like a workshop. And so that's cool. Is that free or is that something people can go uh, to? I, 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 I will let you know. I don't, I mean, they, they, they're just in talks right now about it. So I think it's actually going to be later on, like in the fall or winter of 23 or, you know, so. Okay. Well, that's so cool. I, um, I do have a question. I know I'm running low on time. Have you worked with arts and letters yet? Uh, I, it's, no. I think it's an, it's a radio program, I think with KUAR. Oh, okay. No, that sounds great. I will, I will, I will get with them as well. So art and letters. Mm -hmm. It's a, and it's a what radio program? Yes, I think. Okay. Is it, where is it based out of? Uh, Little Rock. Okay. Okay, so uh, I guess everybody, if you want to drop your any contact information it's about time to kind of wrap this up um yeah i'm uh, also if you want to see some of the other workshops including marketing um we also have one on research for memoir writing um everything you need to know about education grants we have um one on the the law of art kind of like related to arts how um the law is related to different arts aspects finding grants. We also have one for finding your own voice. Um, so there's, we have a lot of videos here that we've done before that you might check out and we will be doing more of these workshops moving forward. Um, so if you have ideas or you would like to keep in touch with us, we would love to have you. Uh, I'm gonna drop my email in here. In fact, in fact, I'm working with one creative who's even here right now for about something for how to get your hustle on or how to diversify your revenue and think creatively outside of the box so that you can definitely um, find ways to diversify your revenue streams. That's, that's something that Sean talked about too. So. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Great.
Well, um, if nobody else has any questions, uh, is there anything that we should have asked you, Sean, that we haven't? Um, no, I can't. I, I, I can't think right offhand. What? Um, no, I. Um, no, I, I, that's, I. That's my final reporter question. I always use on people, <laughs> and sometimes it works fantastically. Like, <laughs> so, just thought I'd drop that in there. No, I think we hit we hit about everything that I can think of right right out there at the moment. Um, I know uh, another one one more thing. I did uh, the uh, I did a thing with uh, I was on a podcast with Startup Junkie as well in Fayetteville, and so that just dropped like a couple of days ago. So if you go to the Startup Junkie podcast, uh, I'm I'm their I'm the the newest one. So that was a, and it's a you know. They were wonderful, and that was there is another you know they're great. His little kind of help up, help out startups mm -hmm. like myself, you know, working on projects like that. So if you do, if you, and that's something to think about when you're doing something like that. Like it just it turns into a business, you know. Yeah, collaboration can always be key once you start collaborating, and more opportunities yeah. will will arise. Shay, did you want to say something? I guess not. <laughs> she raised her hand, then took it down. Y'all, well, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we've only got about three minutes anyway. Okay. Um, no, I wasn't right. trying to say anything. I was applauding his uh, oh. shout out to Startup Junkie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we brought them, we actually brought them down for a workshop last year and um, they're great within Conway. So, yeah, they're real. They, they do a lot of good work. They do. Yeah, they're so nice and helpful. And yeah, they're wonderful. Well, but yeah, I like the multiple. When someone mentioned the multiple revenue streams, it's always good with any of this stuff. When you're doing art, you know, that's key, you know, to <laughs> try to facilitate that. That's, you know, because it's like, think of it like, you know, because I, I also, I mean, I teach part time, I do workshops, I do my book, I do gallery shows. I mean, that's how, as an artist, you know, think of it as like an, you're, it's like an elevator is that if I just did one thing, it'd just be one cable holding it up, but you want lots of different cables holding up your elevator, you know? And so all those revenue streams help. That's the way to, that's how it works. I mean, yeah. So anyway. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much for everyone being here. I really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, I did drop my um, email in here. And we hope to see you soon. So Excellent. thank you. Thank you very much for everyone for coming. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. It's been fun. Yeah. Uh -huh.